The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terramina's on Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Got a big show here tonight. Obviously, we're going to break down some spring sports. Obviously, we're going to recap the El- the Oxford Invitational. Of course, that took place this past weekend. Um, of course, Lake Orion boys winning um, a nail biter over Rochester Adams. Um, we're going to break that one down. Um, and that's also the first win for um, new coach Andrew McDonald, um, who took over the range for legendary coach Dan Ford. Um, so we're going to break all that down. Also, we're going to talk about the basketball coaching situations over at um, Avondale and Pontiac. Of course, they've had new head coaches within the last week. We're going to break all those down as well. So a lot to look at um, heading into the pod this week. Um, let's go to our main story. Of course, the first big story here. Um, let's go to Pontiac. I mean, people are going to look at, obviously, you know, when you look at Pontiac, um, they do have a new coach. Um which was a, which, you know, what I didn't expect. I mean, obviously, when you look at the, um, when you look at the hire that Pontiac made, I mean, like, um, you know, they went with Andrew um, Myers. Of course, a lot of people know Andrew Myers within the area. Um, he is the new head coach, Adam Pontiac, taking over David O'Neill. Um, it's an interesting hire. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at, of course, with Pontiac, um, they really haven't been, you know, the same program since um, Coach Joe Schroeder left Pontiac for Lake Orion, and then Damon O'Neill took over that program. And then, you know, Pontiac, they had some good teams, but not like what they were under, of course, Joe Schroeder. Um, of course, we remember that team when they went, um, when they had, um, I think they went 20 and, um, I mean, they had a great run. They went to the regional, um, Final where they lost to New Haven, but Andrew Myers, of course, is is very interesting because here's a guy that you know played basketball at Clarkston, knows the rivalry between Clarkston and Pontiac really well. I mean, Andrew Myers, we know he was a player at Clarkston, played under Dan Fife. Um, he wrote some really interesting things on Twitter. Um, you know, I mean, like, um, but a lot of people really like this move. I mean, like for Andrew Myers. And I think that's the thing that, you know, you got to look at. And Pontiac, we know they're, they just got their gym renovated. And that's a big deal because, you know, when you look at what happened, they played most of their games this past season at Pontiac Kennedy. And, you know, Pontiac Kennedy, you know, yeah, their, their courts, I, I played in that court. I mean, like, and, um, you know, it's a good size core. I mean, like they, I mean, they, but they have one set of bleachers there. Um, it's not a big court. I mean, it's not a big gym. I mean, that's really where, um, you know, that Pontiac played. They're both their boys and girls teams played there at Pontiac Kennedy when Cy Green Gym was being um, renovated. And you look at, of course, but with Pontiac, obviously, you look at the new football field there. Um, they just named a new football coach there. A couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I'm curious to see. And now you have Andrew Myers, former assistant at O'Neill, but, you know, it's a well known name. It's a young coach um, who's got a proven track record. And, you know, Myers said some really interesting things on Twitter um, announcing his hire at Pontiac. Of course, he posted it on his Twitter fa- page. Um, to quote, God is the greatest. I would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciate the Craig Coverton, Kelly Williams, and Lee Montgomery, um, and the entire Pontiac School Board for allowing me to become the next basketball coach at Pontiac High School. The opportunity to lead our student athletes, not only on the basketball court, but in the game of life, means a great deal. Thank you. I look forward to representing the city and putting out a product that we can be proud of. Um... You know, when you look at Pontiac, and I look at that, I look at that tweet. Um, very appreciative, very appreciative of the opportunity to take over the program. Um, Pontiac has really fallen on some hard times lately. I mean, last season, 
They went 3 and 19. They fell in the first round the water for Kettering 65-48. Um just a tough tough deal for Pontiac. I mean like just a very tough deal for them. Um they were in the gold last year. Um now with the OA going going to three divisions for boys basketball, they're going to be in the blue. Um a lot more tougher competition. I mean but when you look at a coach like Myers, a young, proven coach um, who's hungry, leads Pontiac to lead, to lead Pontiac, obviously, um, there's an open opportunity here for Myers to right the ship and turn the things around over at Pontiac. Um, I mean, like, when you look at Pontiac, I mean, they need, they need, you know, and I'm not knocking Damon O'Neill here, but, you know, when you look at Andrew Myers, of course, I mean, like, this is going to be a very interesting Interesting hire, to say the least, over at Pontiac. Really curious to see how this is going to go. Um, he also said to student-athletes, thank you for allowing me to be in your life. Throw up for the chance to learn from you, to watch you grow from one another, and to build relationships that will last a lifetime. Um, through, through change, can be uncomfortable. We will tackle this together on the court and in the classroom. Says the right things here. I mean, he really does say the right things here. I mean... Pontiac, we know, has had a history. I mean, like, we know, you know, it's not easy having to go through another coaching transition. I mean, and, but when you look at, of course, Myers was an assistant coach with the program. So I don't know how much change the changeover is going to be. I mean, you look at, of course, internal hires, they don't really, you know, there is going to be some change, but I don't know if I see a lot of change. With this hire. I, I really don't. Um, you know, obviously when you look at football, um, with some of the coaches there in football, West Bloomfield, perfect example of this, with Zach Hilbert's taking over, he's in the building. You know, he's in the building. He's been an assistant, longtime assistant over at West Bloomfield for football. Um, with Myers' case, you got to look at, of course, okay. Um, he was an assistant. He knows his program inside out. He knows the personnel he's got, he's got, and, you know, and I think that's going to help them. The, the, the kids know who he is. They know who he is. Um, and then, of course, you look at the, you look at the um, coaches that he's played for or worked with. You look at, of course, he played under Dan Fife when he was at Clarkston. Um, he's worked with Todd Colbert. He's worked with Jermaine Jackson. I mean, those are well-known basketball names within the high school community, you know, that are well-known, proven winners. You look at, of course, Todd Colby. He's currently coaching Ocean Lake St. Mary's. Jermaine Jackson, he's been, he's been, I think he coaches in college now. He's an assistant in college. Um, and, you know, and, the, and they prepared Myers for this moment. They prepared him for this moment. They prepared him for, to get him ready for this opportunity. I mean, this is Myers' first, First coaching opportunity as varsity head coach. So this is a very interesting. Um, so for Myers, you know, this is this is going to be a very tough challenge, I think, for Pont, for um, for him leading this program. Um, and you know, and of course, um, I'm very curious to see how um, how he's going to do. I mean, like he said, quote to Oakland Fieldhouse, Dan Fife, Todd Colbert, and Jermaine Jackson. Thank you for the support and guidance throughout my basketball journey. You provided me with amazing opportunities that I will use as the base for all my future careers. I appreciate the preparation you have all provided me and wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. That's what Myers concluded with in his tweet. So, you know, he says the right things on Twitter. He bas- he does say the right things. The challenge for Myers is going to be is how is he going to Build a program. How is he going to build the program? Of course, you know, you look at Pontiac, you know, you look at the days of Robert Rogers, Lance Davis, um, when Pontiac North and Pontiac Central were together. Um, then they merged into one big Pontiac High School. Um, and then and then now you look at, of course, what Joel Schroeder did at Pontiac. I mean, like, he did an outstanding job with that program. I mean, I mean, but Pontiac has really fallen into some tough times. I mean, like, you know, you look at basketball, boys' basketball is the big deal in Pontiac. It really is. I mean, you really look at what Pontiac, they've struggled. 
I mean, that's that's honesty. They've really struggled. And, you know, you kind of look at it, you know, boys basketball has always been that outlet for Pontiac. And when you have a coach like Andrew Myers, you know, you know the history. You know the proven track record he's got. I mean, bottom line is, when you look at when you look at this hire, you know, he's got to produce at Pontiac. When you look at the division you're in, I mean, the division has changed. I mean, like, obviously, you're going from, you're going from the gold division where it's, it's a much smaller division. Now you're going to have to deal with some big schools like, like Oxford. You got to deal with Rochester. Stony Creek's in there. I mean, that's not going to be easy for them. That's not going to be, and you got Berkeley in there too. I mean, those are, I mean, Royal Oaks also in there. That's not going to be easy for Pontiac. You know, and then, the, and then Avondale, of course, Avondale, we're going to talk to them in a minute. Because they just made a big time hire, um, so we're gonna talk though. We're gonna talk Avenue in a couple minutes. But you look at what Pontiac's got to go through. They got some challenges ahead of them. I mean, they got some challenges ahead of them. I mean, can Andrew Myers turn this program around? Can he do it quickly? That's the big question. You got to look at what Pontiac because if he can do that, then I think they could turn this thing around quickly. I mean. I don't expect it like a quick one-year fix with Pontiac. This is going to take maybe at least two, maybe three years, you know, to get this program back in the thick of it. I mean, like, you know, you could tell, I mean, this is a very difficult, very, I mean, Pontiac's a very difficult job. It really is. But, you know, they have a lot of confidence in, Co- in Andrew. I think Andrew's going to do a very good job over there at Pontiac. I mean, like, I think he's got a great chance. The question for me with Pontiac is going to be is this. Can Myers build program strength? That is going to be the question. Because when it comes to program strength, it is not a good recipe for Pontiac. I mean, it really hasn't been. And you look at a course with the Phoenix, you know, program strength, it's, it's critical. It is absolutely critical for them to keep program strength because – because if not, they're going to be in some trouble. And you look at a course, I mean, you look at a course, they have Pontiac Middle School right next door to you. They have them right next door. And, you know, you have, you have that, you have, um, you know, you, you have a good feeder system. You have a good feeder system. Then. But a lot of those kids from Pontiac, they usually transfer out of the city. And, you know, it's going to be Myers' job to say, you know what? Play for us in the city. You know what I mean? You're representing the city. You're representing a great community. You're representing a great town. We're coming back. Um, you know, we're not. We're. I mean, we're coming back. We're going to try to bring back the Pontiac of old, you know, where we were just beating people. We were beating people, winning games. And this is where, this is where he's got to bring that, that mindset is, you know, when Pontiac basketball was very good. I mean, you look at it. They were competing with Clarkson. They were competing with, um, you know, they were competing with, you know, with the upper echelons of the OA. I mean, you look at, of course, they were competing with the some of the upper echelon teams in the state of Michigan. I mean, you know, they were, they were beating people. They were winning games. I mean, I know people are going to say, well, Pontiac's not been the same since Joe Schroeder left. It left for Lake Orion. I mean... You know, I don't. I don't know if I can say that, but, but um, but bottom line is, you know, it's clear. It's, it's clear that, you know, a Pontiac. You know, it's going to come down to is can Myers turn it around? That's the question. That is the big question. Is can he turn it around at Pontiac? Can he bring it back to the Pontiac of old? That's the big question. That is the big question I have for Pontiac is can he bring the Phoenix back? That's the big question. Because you got a young coach in there, well-respected coach, not only within Oakland County, his playing days, but also, you know, he was very good. He was very good. He was a very good player. He led Clarks in the state semifinals um, when he was there. Of course, I remember, I mean, like, this is... Myers is one of the one of the most respected players in Oakland County. He was very respected. 
He was very respectful. And then now you have, now you're putting him in Pontiac. I mean, like, you put him coaching the Phoenix where he was an assistant last year. I think there's a lot of upside with Pontiac. I think there's going to be a lot of upside because, you know, you look at the talent level there, the question's going to be is program strength. How is this team going to respond to Myers? That's the big question I have with Pontiac. But, you know, they got a lot of confidence in him. So, but I'm very curious to see what Myers does with the schedule. And a lot of people really love the hire outside of Pontiac. I mean, I looked at other people's Twitter accounts. I've looked at Shane Hines' Twitter account. You see, um, he's the AD at Troy. And he really loved the hire. And when my thought, when, when I saw this hire, you know, I thought to myself, hmm, this could work. I think this could work over at Pontiac. I think this could work. I mean, the question is, can he keep the kids in Pontiac? Can he bring back the culture of Pontiac? Can he bring back Pontiac Bowl? That's the big question I have um, with Myers over there at Pontiac. That's the big time question. I mean, you know, everybody knows Pontiac of the um, Pontiac of old. Obviously, you know when they had deep postseason runs, they had um, we know the Robert Rogers days, the Cy Green days. We were at Pontiac Northern. You have Lance Davis. He was at Pontiac Central. Um, just bringing that energy and atmosphere back in the Cy Green gym. Um, which I think will be renovated next year. Oh, actually this year. But but I'll tell you what. I mean, like, you know, I'm curious to see what product he will have at Pontiac. Really, really curious to see what happens there. Um, so that's my take on Pontiac. Um, the hire there of um, Andrew Myers, new head coach at Pontiac. Um, like I said, I'm very curious to see how he does there. Um, you know, can he bring back Pontiac to the to their glory days? I mean, program strength's a big time concern. There's some question marks there. Um, but you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Pontiac. Really, really curious to see what happens there with the Phoenix. Um, let's go now from Pontiac to um Avondale. Um, I talked last week about this. Uh, I talked about Jared Thomas last week stepping down from Adams, leaving a legacy. Um, and he, and he did, he left the legacy at Adams, um, leading at, they were 59 and 37 last, I mean, like in the four years that he was at Rochester Adams, um, two district titles, a regional title, um, he led, he led that team to, you know, even, even bigger heights than John Hall did when he was at Adams. And that says a lot there, really did. Um, but now he's a new coach at Adam, at Avondale. Um, and obviously, of course, when we talk Avondale, um, you know, obviously they, um, of course, Pat Clancy stepped down. Um, Aaron Fox took over as interim coach. Um, um, so they went with, um, so they went with Thomas and Thomas is now back coaching at Avondale. And, you know, it, it created shockwaves around the OA. It created, it created a lot of shockwaves. It created a lot of, you know, like, going like, wait a minute here. There's people in there going to say, wait a minute here. Thomas just left Adams. You know, Adams, you know, Adams had two district championships, a regional championship, and you decide to go to, you decide to go to Avenue. You decide to go to Avenue. I'm mean, going like, I mean, like, I know a lot of pundits have said that. You know what I mean? Like, thinking, I go, like, why would he go, why would he choose to um, go to Avondale? Um, so, it's really interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, Thomas worked for um, Coach Tim Morton, of course. I know Tim Morton very well. Um, he also coached at, uh, at um, Oakland Christian uh, for a time. But people are going to say, well, you know, with Thomas, I mean, like, why leave a good thing? Why would you leave a good thing, you know, to come to a program that does need some fixing a little bit? I mean, and there's no doubt about it. Avondale does need some fixing a little bit. Um, but, you know, Avondale last year, they were 10 and 12 last year. Um, so I'm curious to see 
you know, and I think it's, I, it's, I mean, and he went to, he went on my, at my prep zone and talked to Scott Bernstein about this, um, defending his movie. He said, the deflection isn't, re- the decision isn't the reflection how I view Adams or I feel about my time there because the last four years was a wonderful experience all the way around. I think those guys in my first season of those guys, the first, my first season went to work and set the standards of expectations. I love my players. I love the people at Adams. I can't even explain how much pride I take into what we accomplished together. When Thomas took over at Adams the first year, and, I, and it goes back to what I remember that, that, that team over at Adams, um, you look at that team there, and Adams really, really struggled. Um, you know, after the Erodius, what happened over there, you know, and they had, um, both Jake and Ethan emerged and left, um, Gunnar Walters left, um, Adams was, I mean, and then of course you look at the program strength was, was just decimated. They didn't have a freshman program there. I mean, I remember that. I remember that. And that was when Adams had their dark days. And Thomas brought that program back. And look at where Adams is at now. He brought that program back, built through program strengths, and they turned that program around. I would probably say, honestly, it took them at least two years to do it. Because, you know, the first year, they really struggled. I mean, they did struggle. Don't get me wrong. And then the second year, a little bit better. You know what I mean? They district semifinal. And then last year, and then of course the third year, district championship lost to Clarkson in the um in the um regional semifinal. And then last year, overcome winning their first regional in school history. They knocked off from Clarkson three times. And you look at of course the um you look at of course the um you know, you look at of course um what Thomas has done, it is legendary what Thomas has done. Um, and now, you know, he had a chance to make his magic in Avondale at this place where Tim Morton called, used to call home. He was there for two stints at Avondale. Um, I mean, like, I'm curious to see how he's going to do it. I mean, considering, of course, Thomas now goes from the red to the blue. And you look at, of course, where Avondale's at. You know, Avondale, you know, last year they were in the gold division. Now they're in the blue. Of course, the blue, the OA went three divisions. Um, But, you know, you look at Avondale and say, and people are going to say, well, why? Why? I mean, why would you go to Avondale? I think there's several reasons why Thomas would go to Abdo. Obviously, the Tim Morton connection. You know what I mean? Of course, he was his assistant. He was his JV coach. Um, so there's a connection there. Um, I mean, like I, I mean, like I'm, I mean, like I'm still, you know, completely mind boggled why he would go there. But you know, I, I, I'm starting to understand it now. You know, I mean, you look at Avondale. There's some similarities. There are some similarities compared to, you know, when he was at Adams. That's what he said to Bernstein was, you know, there's some similarities. I mean, and it's he said, quote, it's a new challenge. It's just like Adams. Want to build a program on principle, character, discipline, and hard work? There's a lot of ingredients to take things to a whole other level. It's the kind of level that Coach Morton took this program to. That's the goal. He was my mentor. I hope our teams remind people around here of his best teams. We play 84 feet. We'll be relentless. It's an interesting one because it's a new challenge. Is it like Adams? Um, Not necessarily because there's several differences from his first year at Adams compared to what he's going to have at Avondale. I mean, you look at what he's going to have at Avondale. I mean, you have players like DJ Moody. You're going to have Dequarius White, Anthony Burton, and Justin Sykes. Um, and I know how good they are. 
I mean, I'm not sure if Tyler Herzog is going to play. I mean, if he does, that's going to be a big plus for Avondale. Because <laughs> you look at what Avondale has. You look at what the Yellow Jackets have. I mean, do I think, are they one of the favorites in the blue next year? Absolutely they are. I think the challenge for Thomas is going to be at Avondale is building program strength. If he could build program strength over at Avondale, there should be no reason why this team will not be in the, um, should not be in the red division in no time. Because that's how much, I mean, you look at Adams. I mean, obviously Adams under Thomas was in the white. They were in the white for a while. Then they had to go up the red after, a, um, after the third year. I mean, they were up in the red. And they held more than held their own in that division. I think that's what Thomas sees with, uh, with Avondale, is they can do some damage in this division. You look at the division that they're going to be in with the blue, is they're going to be in a division with Oxford. You got Berkeley's in there, Royal Oaks in there, Stony Creek's in there, and Rochester's in there. Those are going to be Avondale's toughest competition in that division. Because you look at that comp the competition in that division, those are the teams you're going to have to deal with. Now, Oxford's still looking for a new coach. And I'm curious to see where Oxford goes with their hire. I mean, really curious. <laughs> but when you, look at, when you look at Thomas at Avondale, it's a big hire. It is a big hire. And then you look at, of course, with Pontiac with Andrew Myers. That's a big hire, too, because Andrew Myers, he knows the area. He knows the area. He knows the kids there. And you look at Thomas, obviously we know what he brings. So when you look at, when you look at of course, with Thomas, obviously with him, it's going to come down to is can Thomas build this program in one year? Because there are some pieces for a turnaround at Avondale. There are talent there. The question's going to be is, will the kids buy in? Now, when you look at what Thomas, obviously you look at, he's got the two district titles and the regional title at Rochester Adams. You know, that, that says a lot right there. That says a lot right there with his coaching pedigree. And that alone, you know, that's going to get kids involved. He was also the B-Camp Basketball Coach and Association Coach of the Year this year. You know, that kind of, that tells you something right there. It really does. I mean, 59 and 37 in your last four years. Four years at Adams. And, of course, when they, and, of course, let's not forget, I mean, like, his first year, Adams went 7-14. and 14. So that kind of tells you something right there. That really does. For Avondale, I am very curious how they're going to book their non-conference. Because it wouldn't surprise me if Avondale plays against teams that are in the red. <laughs> it would not surprise me. Because that's how good Avondale, I think, can be. That's where the vision I think Thomas wants Avondale to be at. I mean, the bottom line is, <coughs> when you look at Avondale, I mean, they've got a lot of work ahead of them. But they have athletes. They have athletes. I mean, you look at the culture at Avondale the last two years. They've changed football coaches. They've changed basketball coaches. I mean, you just had a new athletic director over there at Avondale. I mean, there's been a lot of changeover at Avondale, and I'm very curious to see how the changeover is going to be. Really am. But it'll be very interesting. I mean, you look at it, the division they're in. I mean... I'm curious to see how this team's going to look. Really am. Under Thomas. I mean, you look at the word relentless. You look at 84 feet. You know, I'm curious to see. 
But Avondale, we know, is a much bigger court than like Rochester Adams's. We know that. And I'm curious to see how his conditioning program is going to be. I'm, condi- I'm curious to see how his program strength is going to be. Because those are challenges. <laughs> those are going to be challenges. For Rochester Adams. Um, for, for Avondale. I am very curious to see how Thomas does this. Especially with program strength. And especially conditioning. Because... That's going to be his challenge over there at um, at, um, Avondale. Because, yes, everybody's going to look at the pedigree. Everybody's going to look at the Tim Horton pedigree. We know what Tim Horton's done at Avondale. We know what he's done. Proven winner. Led into a state title. Um, I got to remember what year that was, though. But they did lead into a state title over there. I mean, but there's going to be some challenges. For sure. And when you look at that division, as I mentioned earlier, it's not easy. I mean, you look at, I think Rochester is going to be much improved. Stony Creek, I think, is going to be much improved because of what they got coming back. Um, they got they got some players coming back. I mean, yes, they were a senior heavy team last year, but their lower levels were very good. I mean, now people are going to say, well, it doesn't always translate from JB to varsity. But I think something's there with Stony Creek. I think something's there. Because you look at that team, you look at that program, um, something's there. I mean, honestly, you know, I I think they're going to be improved. You know Aaron Smith at Royal Oak's going to be good. Um... They did. They do lose. They did lose a couple players, um, but they still got a couple of them back. Um, Berkeley, we know about them. They're well coached under Coach Joe Sermo. Um, curious to see what happens there. Pontiac, we talked about with Andrew Myers there. Ferndale University is very interesting because um, I I don't know who's coming back for Coach Josh Nix, uh, but they're always well coached. Um, and then there's Oxford. I mean, when you look at the Wildcats, um, they do return. They have Jake Champagne coming back. They have Dominic Cassisi. Um, You look at both Katie brothers. Um, you have Luke Stolfin coming back. But the question for me is, who's going to be their coach? That is the big, big question I have for... Um, that's the big question I have for... Um, or, um, you know, when you look at it, that's a big question I have. Is, you know, for Oxford, is who's going to be their coach? That's the big question. I mean, I mean, like, I think it's got to be the right guy for that team. And I've got some hints who I think it should be. But I'm curious to see what happens with Oxford. I mean, like, I'm very curious to see what happens there. Um... But what Thomas, what what Thomas, of course, um, with Thomas, obviously, you know, going from Adams to Avondale, um, I will be very curious to see how Thomas adjusts to Avondale going through it. It'll be a different transition for him. Um, when you look at, of course, with Rochester Adams, um, they do have a lot coming back. Um, of course, obviously, William G., you look at, of course, and Peter Kardashian. You got a very good program there. Um, Brady Prescorn, I don't know if he's coming back or not. He just committed to Indiana. He just committed to um, Michigan. Um, Blake Cozen at um, Clark's. I mean, Blake Cozen at, Brody Cozen at Clarkston um, just committed to Indiana. So I'm really curious to see how, um, how like, let's say, if they, get, if they get done with their football seasons, if they're going to play basketball or not. I mean, or unless they enroll early. Um, so there's a lot of questions there surrounding both Prescorn and Cozen at the respective schools. Um, if both of them do enroll early, it's going to be big losses for both those teams, Adams and Clarkston. But with Adams, it's going to come down to is who's going to be their next coach? I mean, that's the big question after Rochester Adams. Who's going to be the guy there? Um, 
to replace Thomas isn't an assistant. I think I think it'd be good if if it if Adams were to keep their coach in house. Um, but with Thomas now at Avondale, I'm curious to see how he does with this team. I'm very curious to see how he does with this program. Um, program strength is very critical for Avondale. It is very critical because you look at the programs that they have. Um, you got to look at the numbers. You got to look at the middle school level. Obviously, Avondale Middle School. Um, you got to look at the numbers. You got to look at the personnel. Um, just a lot of questions there for Avondale. Just a lot of questions. So I'm very curious to see what happens with the Yellow Jackets, um, you know, going forward. And, you know, everybody says the home run hire. You know what I mean? And hiring a guy who went, who's won two district titles and a regional title, um, that is a home run hire. I mean, honestly, that is a big, big hire for sure. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like, obviously... You know, when you look at Rochester Adams, I mean, like, it is a big, big hire, to say the least. I mean, it is a big hire you know, for, for Avondale. It's a big hire, to say the least. I mean, like, you know, going back to their old roots and, you know, bringing back um, bringing back one of their own. And Thomas is one of their own over there at Avondale. And, you know, we'll see what happens. You will see what happens. Okay, now we're going to recap also coming up. The um, Elmer Ball Invitational that was at Oxford this weekend. A lot of always schools went to this. Um, of course, you know, you look at obviously the, um, recap of this, of course, of course you look at, of course, I was personally there on Saturday, um, over Adam Oxford and it was a very interesting meet. It was a cold meet, really cold day there, raining early, the wind, um, I mean like the rain, the wind, um, over there. Um, I do like to give a special shout out to Sea Home Baseball. Um, I like to give a special shout out to um Nick Scheinfeld. Um he threw a second straight no hitter. Um congratulations to him. Um beating Bloopy Hills is a very good team. Um so congratulations to Nick um Scheinfeld. Um second straight no hitter for Seaholm. Seaholm I expect could be a player come postseason time. Um in the I think they're gonna be a big time player, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I think they can give Birmingham Bro the rights to run. Um, uh, but give a special shout out to um C home pitcher, um C home pitcher um Nick Scheinfeld um for um for doing a second no hitter, getting in the record book. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to Birmingham C home as well. Um now let's go back from baseball a little bit. Let's go to the back track and field. Um You know, when you look at the recap here and you got to look at, obviously, um, you know, I think it's going to come down to the boys' side of things. Um, on the boys' side of things, this was nuts. I mean, absolutely nuts. Um, Lake Orion won that meet um, by three points over Rochester Adams. Um, Rochester Adams, let's not forget, beat Lake Orion in the dual meet. They beat him in the dual meet earlier this year. It wasn't even close. But Lake Orion found a way and won with only one first place finisher. And that was at the pole vault. I mean, Phineas House, he won the pole vault 12 feet 6. I mean, Lake Orion had 83 points. Adams had 80. West Bloomfield was third with 63. Troy was 50.5. And Oxford rounded up the um rounded up the top five with 44.5. So it kind of tells you something there. Lake Orion found a way with enough points to win that meet. And I think the difference was, you know, you look at, you look at, of course, some very good individual performances. Um, Cameron Flowers of West Bluebill. I mean, I'll tell you what, he's going to be really good in football. I mean, he's going to be really good. He won the 100 meter and he won the 200 meter. And he also anchored the four by one. So that kind of tells you something right there, West Bluebill. They ended up doing significant damage in the sprints. They made a lot of noise, a lot of contribu- a lot of contributions. They had they won that meet, they won that invitational 
I mean, they won that those events. I mean, you look at Rochester Adams. You know, obviously, when you look at Adams, you know they're very good in the distance. You know they're very good. I mean, I mean, you knew it was going to be a battle. I mean, it came down to this. If I mean, distance this year in the boys' side, Adams is really good. <coughs> I mean, the mid-distance, they're very good. I mean, Demarcus Rouse, he won the 400-meter. Parker Olaski won the 800-meter. And Michael Wilkerson won the um, 110 hurdles. And all of them anchored, and also Rouse anchored the 4x4, four four, which won that. So it kind of tells you something where Adams is at. And then, of course, Olaski also anchored the 4x8, won that. So when you look at Adams, come regional time, they're scary. They're going to be scary. I mean, honestly, with Rochester Adams, that's scary. Because no doubt, when I look at that regional for Rochester Adams, and they and Lake Orion, they're in two different regionals. I'll tell you what. That regional where Adams is at, with Oak Park, Royal Oak, Troy, Royal, I mean, like, I mean, like, my goodness. Can you, that's going to be interesting. Adams is going to be a big-time player in this. I mean, you look at the regional that they're in, and I think Adams has got a great shot to win their regional, especially with the depth they have in distance. They could do some damage. I mean, they made some big-time changes in the regionals. They made some big-time changes. I mean, you look at, of course, um, Region 8. You got... This is, this is insane. You got Avondale, Berkeley, Grove, Seaholm, <laughs> Brother Rice, Detroit Renaissance, UD Jesuit, Oak Park, Adams, Rochester, Stony Creek, Royal Oak, A&T, and Troy. That's an insane regional. That's an insane one. You look on the boys' side of things, Adams has a great chance to win this regional. They have a great chance. Now, yes, they're going to say they got to go to Oak Park. You know, they got to go to Oak Park, yes. I mean, you got to go to Detroit Renaissance. We know how good they are. And then on the flip side, the girls... I think you got a chance. If you're Royal Oak, if you're Seaholm, this is bad for you that Adams is in this regional. This is really bad for you. Because Adams has the distance and the mid-distance to match them. They do. And they have the relays to do it. Oak Park's got the sprint relays down. And the girls' side of things, Oak Park's probably the best hurdle team in the state. Well, that kind of tells you something right there. Kind of tells you something. So, in that region, that is loaded. That regional there is absolutely loaded. Um, And then, you know, and then Lake Orion and Adams, they're going to probably... I'm curious to see where Lake Orion stands in this. Because they're a big... They're a player now in the red race right now. I still think Adams will win the regular season title. But if it comes down to the league, it'll be interesting. Because we'll see. Because I know Lake Orion's got to meet with Rochester coming up next week. And then you look at, of course, I think Adams, they go on their bye. Um, Oxford, we know, has been up and down. Clarkson's been up and down um, in that red division. So when you look at the regional, Adams has a great chance. And when you look at Lake Orion's regional, um, obviously you got Clarkson and Oxford there. You have Nova Detroit Catholic Central's there. You have Wall Lake Central's there. Farmington's there. It's a tough regional for Lake Orion. And then you have Milford and Lakeland and West Bloomington. It's a tough regional for Lake Orion. I mean, it's going to be tough. No doubt about it. But for Coach Andrew McDonald's in his first year, Taking over the program for legendary coach Dan Ford. Winning your first 
Invitational. That says a lot. <laughs> Lake Orion, I'll tell you what. They're gonna they're good. They're good. I mean, you look at the players they have on that team, you look at the talent they have on that team, they're very good. There's no doubt about it. Um, on the boys' side, Ethan Gregory won the 300 hurdles. Dylan Stone won the high jump um, for Oxford at six feet. Um, and then you have Valencia Ra Ra Raviscar won the 3200 with a PR of 929. Um, and, of course, the um, 4x2 was also won by Troy uh, with, with Sanjit Village. Chris Grupa, Jason Hamilton, and Darius Whiteside with the 131.97. Um, so that tells you, you know, a lot of good performances on the boys' side. Um, a lot of great performances um, on the boys' side with OA representation there on the boys' side. Um... On the girls' side, of course, you know, Farm Tales Mercy won that with 71 points. West Bloom was second with 62. Oxford was third with 59 and a half. Rochester had 59. So when you really look at that meet, um, Cameron Tatum, I mean, like, won the 100 dash, 200 dash, ran the anchor wig in the 4x1, um, along with Michaela Pittman, Caitlin Bridges, and Gabby Williams. Now, let me tell you something about Rochester. Lucy Cook. Lucy Cook is going to be a special player for Rochester. Not only on the track, but also on the hardwood. Because Lucy Cook is a very athletic player. Very talented player. She ran the 800 meter run, won that with a 218.22. That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. And then she ran the anchor leg of the 4x8 um, along with Chloe Nixon, Valentina Matuli, and Lauren Rosen. I mean, that says a lot. And that time was 949.53. Under 10 minutes. That's good. That's pretty good. Um, Lena Cleveland won the long jump. 17.5. Insane. Mally Bigelow won the um, 1600 meter run. 508.70. That says something right there. That says something. Um, and then, you know, very interesting here, of course, um, I got to give props to Alan Park, who was there at their shot put and discus program. I'll tell you what. I mean, their shot put and discus program. I mean, like, Abigail Russell throwing 40 feet one and 148.1 in discus. That's insane. That's incredible what the Jaguars has done. There's no doubt. Elm Park is a big time player, going to be a big time player in Wayne County. They're going to be a big time player. But I'll tell you what. I mean, when you look at the standings there, out of 30 schools, 30 schools went to this meet, to this invitational. 30 schools. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. You know, how, how that invitation, and just imagine coming up next weekend. You got the New Balance, you got the um, Farmington Invitational coming up. I think that's got about over 50 schools going over there. So that tells you something there. You know, that that's going to be an all-nighter over there. Honestly. Bottom line is, when you look at Farmington, bottom line is when you look at Farmington, they got the facilities to do it. They got the space to do it. Um, You know, and I've seen Farmington's field before. It is a nice field. Really nice area. You have the, you have the, um, you have a, um, you have another field in the back. 
They have a good, they have a good shot put discus area. Um, kind of hard to get to, but it's a nice area. It really is. But I'm curious to see how this is going to go over at Farmington um, this weekend. Of course, there's a lot of teams going there. I mean, there is, there is a lot of teams going there. I mean, like, I'm going to pull up the, um, let me see if I'm going to pull up the um, list right now and see if, um, what teams are going to that invitational. Um, and this, and this one's interesting because, and this one's interesting because, um, you know, it's a Saturday invitational. Um, curious, the teams that are going there, there's got to be over 50 schools. I mean, I know Avondale's going there. Berkeley's going to be there. Seaholm, Bloopy Hills, Clarkston. Um, Farmington, obviously. Um, you got Lake Orion there. You got um Oak Park will be there. Rochester, Rochester Adams, Stony Creek, Royal Oak. Um, Troy will be there, and then West Bloomfield representing the OAA. Um, but there's gonna be some great competition there. I mean, Wall Lake Central probably has one of the best throwing teams in the state. They're gonna be there. Um, you got. Oak Park, obviously, is going to be there. There's a lot of talent over there at the Farmington Invitational. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, I don't know how many players you're allowed per event, but, you know, there's some interesting schools that are going to be there, too. I mean, you look at, obviously, um, you know, um, I'm looking at Coberton Catholic. That's a, that's a team that I, you know, I, I don't know much about them, but... You know, I think that's going to be very interesting to see how they do. Um, Ann Arbor Pioneer, Ann Arbor Skyline, Ann Arbor Huron. Um, of course, we saw Chippewa Valley at Oxford. Um, Warren D. La Salle is going to be there. They were also at Oxford. Um, of course, Lakeland was there um, as well. Um, so a lot to really look at, you know, this Farmington Invitational this weekend. And even Marquette is going to be there. Coming up in the UP. Um <laughs> where, you know, I feel really bad for the um, folks up there at Marquette because they were just completely been inundated with heavy, wet snow. Um, and, you know, for them to make the trip down from Marquette, um, going to um, M28 down to um, I-75, you know, going down I-75, and then to, um, you know, going down to 696, that says a lot, you know what I mean? The, just the travel that Marquette's going to have to make coming down here for the invitation with Farmington. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting. I'm very curious to see how um how this is going to go over at Farmington. I mean, this is one of the biggest events held in the state of Michigan. And I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Because bottom line is, you know, I'm going to be curious to see how this goes. Because I don't, I think the fav, uh, there's really no clear cut favorite here in this, in this, um, if I had to pick a, a team right now that I would say who could win this invitational, I would have to give Rochester Adams the edge. I think Adams is deeper in the boys side. Girls side, I would have to say, um, on the girls' side, I probably would have to give an edge to, um, and even Rockford's going to be there. And Rockford's one of the top teams in the state of Michigan. I mean, and Rockford's got to make that make a trip. You know, they got to make the trip from Rockford to up by 96. Um, so there's a lot to look forward to. A lot of top teams in the state are going to be at Farmington this weekend. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. It really will be. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, other sports, obviously, we talked about baseball. Give a shout out to Seaholm's pitcher. Um, obviously, when you look at others, um, you know, obviously, when you look at, um, I'm very curious to see how um they just released a tennis preview. Obviously, um, we talked tennis a couple weeks ago, um. But I think bottom line is going to be is I think what makes this interesting is going to be is um 
when you look at softball, when you look at baseball, softball, it looks like Lake Orion right now is rolling right now. And I'm looking at the records, you know, and they're rolling right now. I mean, I know the weather hasn't been the greatest. It's been really cold out. Um, it still is. <laughs> but be patient, Michiganders. Be patient. It's going to start warming up soon. Um. I know in, in baseball, obviously, you still got, I still think you got Adams, West Bloomfield, Lake Orion are the teams to beat still. Seaholm could be a player now come postseason time. Um, lacrosse, I still think in the boys' side, Clarkson's there. Um, girls' side, Lake Orion's a sleeper. I mean, watch watch for them. Uh, but I still think it's either Birmingham or... um. Bloomfield Hills is still the cream of the crop in that in the um in um girls lacrosse. Um we've already talked track and field a lot. Of course, Oak Park has mentioned they could be a serious player in the girls side. Um boys side, Adams, watch for them. Um so we'll see what happens. I mean, we we're gonna see what happens going forward here, going forward there. So my final thoughts of the week, obviously. Um Keep an eye on the basketball coaching situation at Rochester, Adams, and Oxford. Um, of course, both those teams are um, looking for new coaches. Of course, we're starting to get very close to the summer season. Um, obviously, summer ball coming up pretty soon. We're also getting one step closer to football season. And, of course, I haven't even started my football previews yet, but I've got an idea where, the, where I think where I'm leaning at right now when it comes to the top, top 10 of the rankings. and. It's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward there. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Also, keep an eye on the situations going around the league as well and also some outside the state of Michigan as well. So, a lot to look at as we head into the middle of May. We're getting, we're actually, we're in the beginning of May and then heading into June. Of course, June, we know where that's going to start of the postseason um, heading into June. So a lot to look at. Um, we still got league titles to the side. We still got them um, before we get into the postseason. Um, a lot to look forward to um, around the OA. All right, we're going to sign off here. Um, make sure as a mention for the vlog. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody.